Hey guys, welcome to the second episode in the Tottenham Let's Play on Football Manager 2013 and hey look, I haven't been sacked. <laughs> uh, this is the league standing then as of the end of the 2047-48 season and no title for us this season unfortunately. We lost out to North London rivals Arsenal. Yeah, dying shame. Uh, just by Amiga three points in the end, not a lot in it. Um, but the problem was, it was in our hands and we blew it. You'll find out how in a moment. Uh, but we'll just go over the rest of the table first. Man United bouncing back, as you can see. They've not been... Uh, well, I mean, yeah, they won the title in 2039, nine years ago. And this traitorous bastard um, is now um, taking control of them. But as you can see, they've been up and down, but they've never really, you know, threatened really much of this decade. But And they didn't really threaten here either, really. But, you know, they came close-ish. Then we have Chelsea and Brighton um, on 71 points. Then City and then Blackburn getting themselves up into 7th uh, ahead of Liverpool in 8th. That's probably one of their lowest finishes in a long time. Yes, Howard Nicholson, you're not doing very well at all, are you, young man? Um, Villa in 10th and then we get the two uh, Midlands clubs. Forest again, see what I mean about what I was talking about, mediocrity. You know, how shit a series would that be going? Hey guys, look, we finished 13th. How good's that? The fuck's that? What what the fuck is their team? That doesn't it's like obviously I know I know you go oh well yeah you build your team I know I know I build your team over a select period of time I mean the first sort of you know 10, 15, 20 episodes of the Brighton series was just you know I mean it was we didn't win it I didn't win anything with Brighton until like two thousand and I mean domestically I, I, I think if, with the exception of after the Europa League. Um, I don't think I've won anything with Brighton until like 2019 you know so it took a while um, but you know I, that was a crap team uh, Stoke Leicester and Swansea again relegated Stoke actually did bizarrely quite well but <laughs> as you can see they scored quite a lot of goals you know they scored the same amount as Wigan and West Brom there in 12th and 11th the downfall, however, is the fact that they conceded 103 goals. I mean, how do you concede that many? Minus 52 goal difference. That is appalling. That is horrendous. Um, but anyway, back to us in uh, North London here. It just had to be between these two. And I'm also not only going to take credit for pushing Tottenham into second, but also, uh, well, pushing them down, I guess, uh, but also uh, claiming something, anyway, for this Arsenal win. <laughs> because I'm still going to say I built this Arsenal team. Not completely, but I had a big say in this Arsenal team. I'm not a legend, though, unfortunately. If we go to the information, it's Marcus Weisner who appears to have come from nowhere. If I'm an icon in this, I'll be amazed, because I didn't do shit. Um, no, there's nothing there. Just going through some of these plays, that doesn't appear to be, no, nothing. Uh, Van der Bolk, is he still going? He is, actually, isn't he? Oh, no, look at that, he's a free agent. He also appears to look like a thumb. Why do they all look like thumbs? Oh, he's going to retire. Yeah, he is going to retire very soon. They all look like thumbs. I don't get it. Um, have I got, like, if I put, like, a face pack on, the thumb face pack... <laughs> Um, no, but I mean, look, look at the value. Oh my god, estimated value of 1.2 billion. And they were predicted third. Damn. Wasn't expecting that. Um, oh, well, yeah, I mean, look, they haven't won the league for a few years when they've been up and down, but eh. well, I've just realised that. And that's a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, that is basically how things have looked. So uh, before we do this, I'm going to go over the transfers, obviously, since we didn't have a February review. Now, I talked last time about cutting the fat at Nottingham Forest, uh, and that is pretty much what I've done to even larger extent here. Um, a lot of players have let go. Just to point out that all these pretty much up to, I think, for, um, I'm trying to remember where I, where I joined. Uh, I think it was, yeah, basically the big, the big ones anyway it's from January onwards all this I had nothing to do with I think apart from perhaps getting rid of one or two young players but all of these were uh, were done by the previous manager for example selling Matteo Mosqueta here for to Man United and, and all this he's a good player this guy he looks quite good uh, Owen McHugh unfortunately got released which is a bit of a shame he's now at Celtic he's had a very strange career hasn't he Man City he went to Re wow, he, wow Celtic and Rangers you don't see that often do you um, you know, Partizan, City, Dortmund, Tottenham, 
it was that a t season Tottenham. Maybe I did um, think he, maybe I did give him too much <laughs> respect. Uh, who else have we got? Basically, yeah, there's just a load of plays that um, I didn't. I had nothing to do with but the plays I've let go then the rest from now are from me uh, first one I let go was a guy called Devon Harris who was from even though he didn't look at it he's from uh, Guyana in uh, the Caribbean he's now at Man City sold him for 12 million pounds Jeff Wilcock um, unfortunately he wants to go a uh, bit of a shame he's now at Man United you may remember I brought him in at uh, Dortmund um, and unfortunately he wants to go and that's the problem we had uh, Tottenham had two quality goalkeepers there's uh, the vice captain is uh, that Munch guy if you remember his name Minus Munch or something uh, he um, was too good for, for Wilcock unfortunately I had to let him go and £10 million I thought I'll get a bit of money for him um, and you can start to get an idea here's another one there's one going to Napoli you don't see that look at that he's always Danish I thought he was English yeah there's you know 30 year old 5 million for nearly 6 million Sold him to Napoli. Uh, here's another one going to Real Madrid for 15. Dirk Bartel, uh, he was unhappy. A lot of these players were unhappy, and generally, I didn't want to let. I didn't want them to go, but you can only do so much before you know. Or either, well, you, well, to be honest, you can't even do anything because they're unhappy, and no much, and no amount of first team football can make them happy again. They want to leave. It really is as simple as that. If they're unhappy they're unhappy so he was unhappy he made a slight profit on him as you can see they brought him in and let him go Robbie Keane style <laughs> one transfer window later um, and I think the rest really were loans oh also we've got let uh, this guy Duarte go to Zenit for 10 million so I managed to raise on top of the generous budget they gave me uh, I managed to raise a respectable amount um, now the two here as you can see you know that they've got I always maintain that you know I just wipe a clean slate I don't care when you came in I don't care who you are if you're not good enough you're not playing and I'm just gonna sell you so I actually didn't know these players had came in uh, let's see where is he said so I managed to make money on most of them I mean Holiber lost four million well nearly five million actually that was a bit of a stupid thing but I, I didn't I didn't know he was um, I didn't know he was brought in so the first players then uh, that I brought in in fact, all of these were done by the manager. Uh, so we made a profit on Wilcock, that's alright. But the two that I've brought in then, so, so these are the two. Well, in fact, the only one I brought in for this season, in fact, was this guy, Leon Fowler. I've talked about him for, and I stand here, I didn't want to pay this much. Blackburn forced my hand. £48 million. Pounds. 40, well, it was £42 million. And then six million because I mean, bear in mind, I had after after raising up all this money. Look how late I bought him, the twenty fifth of January. I had all this money on top of what they gave me. I had a transfer budget in the end of eighty million. Now I was going to spend that. This guy is one of the biggest potentials in the game. Five star potential. Look at them stats. He's 20, was well, was 20. I literally bought, wow, look at that. I didn't even notice. I literally brought, bought him the day before his 21st birthday. I didn't even know that. Uh, here's his report four star. You can play up front uh, as well as on the left. He looks to be a fantastic talent. He jumped out at me straight away when, I, when he burst onto the scene with Blackburn, and he is one of the reasons why Blackburn was so high up in the table ahead of Liverpool. So. Did I pay too much? I probably did. It is going to be a case of Andy Carroll syndrome, probably, as you will find out in a short while. But for now, he's 21 years old. He's got great potential. He's already at four-star ability, apparently. His stats look good. He's English. He's got a lot going for him. And last one here, which I've just brought in for next season, is a guy called Cyril Dennis. Or Denise, I don't know. He's five-star potential as well. I mean, his stats, obviously, are still developing. He is only 16. Uh, but you can get an idea there of the type of player that he is. So, uh, staff-wise, before we go over the uh, the rest of the uh, fixtures and all that, uh, my sister manager is a guy called Michael Duckworth, who is a real player. His favourite clubs are Liverpool, apparently, and Middlesbrough. Uh, he currently plays for, who's that, Bradford PA. They have a full reason name, Bradford Park Avenue. Um, and he has been the assistant manager at Stevenage, Swansea, and has been here now for 10 years. Uh, 
Let's see. So, and he obviously qualified there as uh, assistant manager. Uh, sorry, as taken over manager. You know, whilst uh, they were looking for a new manager, head of youth development. Uh, I kept this. Uh, I think I've kept it all the same. Head of youth development was a guy called Matt Ritchie. I think did I bring him in? I can't even remember. Yeah, he's been here for eleven years. He appears to be doing an okay job, so I'm not going to tinker with it. And the chief scout, uh, I was definitely not going to tinker with because he's someone I worked with before, Craig Parker. Uh, if you look here, uh, he joined in 2029 he also left when i um stepped down as liverpool manager and he brought and i bought him in and he's responsible for a lot of the youth plays that uh, liverpool brought in in the 30s so i would be kind of stupid to uh mess with this i'm going to keep with the assistant manager for now he looks actually quite a good manager i mean you know look at look at them i mean that you can't argue them stats for an assistant manager i'm not he's german apparently as well that's quite funny with an ink like Michael Duckworth so that, there's my staff um, and yeah let's then go over the alpha fixtures so uh, I think we went from who was the first game it was against Cardiff one yeah, 4 4-2 this was um, so you, you get an idea of the plays the goal scorers and so on once I go over them and obviously I'll introduce you to the team after it but because I don't want to spoil anything else uh, but the first game after you, after I continued from the uh, the first game was against Leicester. Pilylavski scoring again. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the goal since it was a nice goal, if I recall. Uh, they did miss a penalty, which we got quite lucky with. Um, Billy Wilson there playing, didn't have a great game. But, you know, I'm not going to fault them. We got the win. Uh, at this point, it was all about stability. I just wanted to, to win. I didn't care how we did it. We won. Little breakaway here. I was also playing with the tactics a little bit. I, I, I changed the um, the full uh, the uh, wing backs. If you've been using, if you have been using a tactic player, by the way, please do get back to me and say how how good is it because I'm really interested to see how uh, other people are using it. But as far as I've what as far as I've done with with it myself, I changed for a while the wing backs to full backs, and it didn't really work. So that's one little thing I would not advise doing. I mean, if you are a smaller club, then fair enough, but I wouldn't advise it in a big club like Tottenham. Or, you know, full of good players. Um, then the next goal, uh, or the next goal, I'm sorry, was 3 1 against Blackburn. Uh, Pilyalavski scoring again. I think, how many times has he scored in a row now? Okay, that hasn't got any data for it. Well, he scored at least three times. That's, what's that? That's six. Is it five? That's five and three. Uh, Wilson and Ishmael Kone scoring. I just want to highlight some of these players. So, uh, Munching goal, I've talked about him before. Lancia is a, a Swiss, I think he's Swiss, yep, Swiss right back. Um, uh, we also have Brookfield, you know him. Karsten Mikowski, I just want to point that guy out, he is unbelievable. <laughs> I mean it, really, really unbelievably good player, you'll find out soon. Uh, Mohamed Cameron is a good little player, the captain at the moment is actually not on the playing here for some reason, I don't know where he is. We'll see him in a, in a second. But yeah, there's the 3-1 victory of a good Blackburn team. We then played Man United and won 2-0. Wilson and an own goal. I'm trying to think, where is he? Where's, um, I can't find him. I think he may have been. He's probably injured if he wasn't playing. Didn't make any subs, as you can see here, either. Um, this guy, Matty Canavan, is a very good player as well. He's got a lot of pace. Good little streaky little winger. We then played Peterborough in the FA Cup third round. Cosimo Romito and Dembele squaring Idris Dembele obviously does a Dembele play for Tottenham uh, Romito is a very good player this guy uh, he is uh, only 17 years old Italian four star potential obviously them stars again it's, it's kind of crap to look at the stats at the moment because they're still developing and they're only going to improve but them physical ones are pretty good for now and that's what you want in the, def in the defender and he got a goal I think that may have even been his debut um, so yeah Next game then was unfortunately my first loss, and that was against Brighton, typically. Uh, Wilson did score, but unfortunately it was not enough. But we bounced back to have a great game here against uh, Millwall, 4-3. Wilson scoring two. Pilyalavski scoring again. Kone missing a penalty. Munch scoring, and I've got to show you this. I'll just show you. I think they also missed a... Did they miss a penalty? Oh, there was no, oh, was no goal. Okay. I thought they missed a penalty then. Um, this was the this was the game then. This was a great a typical London derby as well. So we'll just show you this here. I know these are going to take a while, but whatever. I know you guys want goals, so we'll show you that now. There's Oliver Luar Luar. You may remember him from Nottingham Forest. A guy I pointed out and said, you know, he has a lot of good potential. And unfortunately, he was another player who was just straight up unhappy. You know, I couldn't do anything about it. He 
did not want to be here. And when a player doesn't want to be here, there's not a whole lot you can do, unfortunately. Now, we were 2-0 down here uh, after about 16 and a half minutes. And I was very confused and wondering what the hell is going on. Look, that's, that's a pretty common uh, surname, I assume, for maybe sort of European players or whatever. But Buster Man say that's a common name. We've seen him. Remember him playing for Southampton? Very dangerous striker he was for them. Uh, if you've obviously been playing the save, if you do want to play along or you know, get get to know some of the players or check it out for yourself, the download link should be in the description. If not, remind me. <laughs> I am terrible when it comes to this, but it should be as well as the tactic. Uh, nice header there from Billy Wilson. So after 26 minutes, uh, just halfway through the first half, just gone, um, we were 2-2 and we come back from a 2-0 two, two down, which was very nice. Was, uh, I did expect us to do that though, but a terrible, I don't know what was going on there I mean I don't know how that went down as a munch on goal there must be a way of saying that surely that doesn't sound right but there you go Kone did miss a penalty but Wilson fired it in I was I, I just as soon as he missed that penalty I thought oh crap it isn't going to be our day but then Wilson just made everything a whole lot better and there's the um, there's the left back Stanjek uh, to score and I think that was yeah it was in fact the winner for a few more highlights but that, that was the uh, that was it uh, then we played Lincoln in the next game, in the FA Cup fourth round. Uh, Stuart Lloyd, here's a guy I want to show you very quickly. Uh, Pelavski coming off the bench to score. Uh, Stuart Lloyd, he's a very good player. Uh, four star potential, was four and a half at one point. Can play at. Uh, plays a, wow, I didn't know he could play as a striker, I didn't even see that. He plays mostly as a centre midfielder, can also play as a defender, uh, sorry, defensive midfielder. And also, is that a centre back? That is a centre back. That just didn't look right at all. Uh, but he's a good player and he scores. He's not known for his goals. Luar Luar, as you can see, his uh, ratings aren't that great. Okay, he got a 7 here, but no one really performed that badly because it was a good game. But as you can see here, he should be you know, doing well against a team like Lincoln City, who are in the championship now. Um, and, you know, he, he just did not want to be here. Now, unfortunately, 0 0 against West Brom, uh, which these things happen. 3 1 against Swansea. Uh, Romito scoring twice. See what I mean? He does not. Any time he's played so far, he's just banged the goals in, and he's a, he's a centre back. And Piliyevsky, um with another goal, he does appear to be a bit of a beast. Now this was Fowler's game. I'm trying to think. Yeah, this was um, Leon Fowler's first game. He went straight in the team. I bought him literally like that morning, and he went straight into the team that day. Um, obviously, that would never happen in real life, as he wouldn't be registered quickly enough. But the game, obviously it's a game so uh, he went straight into the team didn't score uh, it was quite quiet in the first half changed them around a little bit I think I was playing them as a poacher when in fact he was an AF I didn't check uh, and I thought actually you know what I better check because I thought it doesn't matter he's good enough he should be able to make, make uh, mincemeat of this Lincoln team but he didn't but he had uh, one chance where I think he hit the bar but other than that he had a reasonably quiet game but you know he didn't do a whole lot wrong it's also this guy I want to introduce you to uh, Domagoj Vr I don't even know how the fuck you say that last name uh, but um, Vrasovic he's a uh, three star potential looks quite a decent little player uh, We so then when obviously the nil nil Fowler played again didn't have a good game and he really didn't have a good game against Swansea you know considering a centre back scored two um, uh, you're looking at this now and thinking oh Forty million pounds and Carol syndrome. Uh, we then lost the two now. Speaking of speaking of which, uh, we lost two 0 to Liverpool. I don't know what happened here. I literally I don't know. We just had it was just one of those games. The game was like it 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 did not let us win this one. I, again I I don't know. There are you just get these games occasionally. But as you can see, we have kept the losses too many. If you look at the start, I don't know why the guy was sacked. To be honest, I don't know whether it's just because it was just a knee jerk reaction to losing to to Arsenal or something, or losing to Chelsea, which it may have been actually. Or no, yeah, probably a knee jerk reaction, just like the, the occasional loss, which we still have here, as you can see, but nowhere near as frequently as uh, the other manager. Uh, well, we bounced back from a Liverpool defeat to beat Stoke 4 0. Fowler did eventually get his first goal about uh, a month. Actually, not even a month. That's, not, that's been a bit harsh. Um, how many games? Five games. Five, uh, fifth game. So, not uh, too bad. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit shorter than uh, the wait for Peter Crouch's first Liverpool goal was, uh, which was something like 24 hours. Uh, but eventually got it here, as you can see. And the first, this is that literally straight from the kickoff. I thought, right, 
these leak goals. If he doesn't score here, there's a major problem. And I handed them the number 10 share. The pressure was clearly getting to him. A nice ball across there by Harvey, who's got a great... Uh, well, I was going to say cross, but generally just wing presence. He, he just dominates the the, uh, the wings and the flanks, and he's very, very good. But uh, nice little take in here, a little bit of burst of pace, and moves in to score his first Tottenham goal. It doesn't actually say it there, uh, but I don't know why, but uh, that was his first Tottenham goal. He Maybe he'd scored in, in the uh, reserves or something, I don't know. Uh, it didn't really uh, want to tell us. Now, uh, the way to get say the uh, number two's name here, the one just on the ball a minute ago, was uh, I think his name is Rambo or Rambu. It's not Rambo, unfortunately. I would like to call him Rambo. Uh, but, but I don't think that's how you say it. It might be. I don't know. But uh, the way the words are, the way the letters are, uh, are made up there, I would probably suggest it's probably Rambau. But uh, a nice cross there from Fowler. So he's gotten himself an assist uh, to Pulavsky's goal. I'm still struggling with his name. I'm just going to say that because I'm just going to say it the way I'm currently saying it because it is a quite a difficult name to say. Stoke offered very little actually, um, or at least threatening wise. You know, look all that good. You know, Eddie Brookfield just made mince, uh, mince meat of them. That's twice I've said that now. <laughs> Trying to get another euphemism. Uh, but yeah, Cameron's another one who can dominate the uh, the wings as well. Cameron and Harvey are very good. You can see he's cutting inside here all the way. And a lovely, lovely finish uh, to make that 3-0. And that really was the, that was game set and match then. There was absolutely no way Stoke could get back. And then in the 92nd minute, uh, Ishmael Kone with the penalty. So next up we played Mansfield uh, in the fifth round. Fair play to them for getting this far. Uh, but unfortunately they were uh, no match for us as uh, Wilson Fowler, Kingsley Graham here, who will be leaving as he is uh, not good enough. No, he just is. I know the goal. I don't let the goal fill you. He's not good enough. And uh, Sergio Lancia. I'm going to say that that C is a harsh C, not a S sound. It's a ch sound because of the accent, I would assume anyway. We've also got here Darren Grimes, another young player. He's only 18, four-star, can play as a centre-back, a right-back or a left-back. He is mostly going to be playing as a, uh, as a right-back, however. Um, next game then was against AC Milan in the Champions League, which we won 1-0 in the San Siro. Pilialowski scoring the vital away goal. This was uh, very, very big indeed. There's naturally Eddie Jong. There's Park Jong Duck, who's a very uh, good player, one of the big names at the moment. Uh, he's a very good striker. A lot of South good, good South Koreans. There was the uh, lad who played for Juventus, of course, who won well player of the year a few times on this. And then we've got this guy who also play, appears to be um, quite a good player. Look out for this guy. That um, th this guy playing up front for Milan. We'd had actually signed him at this point, but for some reason he was still able to play against us. Nice header from Pilialowski. But this guy here on the centre circle, Sejin A. Dogan, uh, we're going to be signing him in the future. We, uh, it doesn't actually show up on the transfers because the transfer hasn't officially gone through. But during uh, January, we did sign him uh, on a pre-contract when his contract ends at Milan. So he's one for the future. Uh, so keep an eye on that for next season. Uh, you'll see his name um, in the next transfer list thing on the in the February review if we get there <laughs> or rather than get sacked again uh, Wigan 3-0 uh, next game uh, Wilson scored himself a hat-trick so he has started to get into a stride now as you can see he was just scoring the odd goal here and there but he's now really getting into a stride and he's uh, becoming the man I knew he would be we then played Newcastle Matty Canavan scoring I thought his name was, was the way you say caravan you know like you know, it's the way you say but no apparently it's Canavan which makes a lot more sense with a nice goal there. Uh, and then we played Arsenal, first North London derby back um, for, a, for maybe 10 years, and we dominated them. Fowler scored from the bench, and Pilialowski scoring a hat-trick. Um, fortunately, Berglund uh, got back, what, one back for him. But a lot of new players now uh, for Arsenal. I mean, OK, I say I built this team. Uh, it is kind of a different team now, not too many players I recognised. The only one there of course was the former Dortmund player who's now 28 a very good player, Richard Abey I signed, I think, look at that stat jeez, look at that physical stat, jeez um, signed up for £7 million from Dortmund which turned out to be a mistake as I robbed my future self of a quality star player, but uh, you know, even then he didn't have a particularly good game and we basically dominated them in which I'll show you the goals now uh, and yeah, it was, it's about time that Fowler starting to score now, he does appear to be finding his feet bear in mind he is only 21 so, you know, I'm not expecting him to set the world on fire instantly yeah, if he's 23 and he scored like 
if he's only scoring six or seven goals a season, I will be saying, all right, hang on, what's going on here? Bear in mind, you can't do tutoring on FMC. I know, I know. I just say, oh, why are you doing FMC? I can't fucking do a whole lot about it now. <laughs> uh, I know people may be saying, oh, I want you to try a new series or whatever, or, you know, real players and so on. But this, as I say, you don't have to watch it. And the reason I'm not going to be starting a new save now is because, well, I, I don't see the point, to be honest. I'm not going to start a new series now when the season has ended if you look today if you look at the date in the top right corner the fixtures have just come out uh, on this day a lovely free kick there from Bergland to be fair I'm actually very happy with Liverpool's uh, opening I was going to say six games more like ten games uh, the only difficult game really the well, difficult few games in the opening really we, where I think we might not get three points would be the United game and you know bear in mind the, the magnitude of change there you know that is a huge amount of change at, at United so we don't know how they're going to start I know it sounds stupid but you know you never know you never know uh, and then uh, this is terrible from the goalkeeper and there's Fowler nipping in very nicely uh, but you never know how United will go I think the really hard one would be Swansea away bear in mind I think we can beat anyone at home uh, but the hard one I think will be Swansea away. I think in the I mean the opening six or six, seven, eight games. I think the hard one will be that. December's going to be a, a motherfucker. That's like we've got I think City on Boxing Day, which I which is going to ruin my Christmas probably. Uh, but a lovely there, a lovely goal from Piliowski for his hat trick. And uh, we move on. Uh, to the next game which was against Milan which we made very easy work of Klaus Christiansen the centre back here scoring two Eddie Brookfield unfortunately got himself sent off uh, but this was very easy and uh, Milan offered very little threat in the end we then played City probably the hardest game um, in the cup so far but we managed to win and there's the captain here he is um, Amaru Shavi uh, very good player he's, he is the captain a complaint centre mid, attacking centre mid, and obviously, as he most of the time does play on the right. Uh, he is the captain, and he's very, very good. Got the winner, which I'll show you now off the bench. In the 67th minute, you can see Billy Wilson got himself sent off, which I was a little bit annoyed by. But when you know, w w when we got the win eventually, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll let him off. Uh, they've also, as you can see, they've got quite a few good players, but I don't know what Rost was doing there. He's a good player as well, in uh, but. Harvey, you know, he's got to take the chances, you know, to beat Man City. We then played him again, this time in the league, literally like five days later. Uh, and 1 2 1, Harvey off the bench to score again. <laughs> uh, can you believe? Uh, Canavan with a very good performance, 8.5 and a goal is Alex Peters scoring for them. I'll show you uh, one or two of their players. There's Harris, obviously, who didn't, well, clearly he, <laughs> he didn't play too well as we won. Um, Alex Peters the captain he's very good there's John Harrington which is let's say one of the most English names I've ever heard in my life um, who else Peters he's good Mark Rocket remember him from Dortmund and Liverpool as well yep Irishman 38 million pounds he bought him for I bought him for 130k from Cork City pathetic <laughs> here's the goals anyway um I think, yeah, it was uh, went from 1-1. One, one. It went 1-0, one, 1-1, one, one, 2-1 to us. Uh, they had the bulk of the chances as well. I mean, they had shots, but not you know, too dangerous. But a lovely little flick on there, and Canavan was onto that in a flash. And uh, I don't like to play the long ball too often. I don't do the uh, Sam Allardyce lump up the field. But unfortunately, that's what happened. And, you know, you, you, you'll take goal out any way they come. But uh, slightly lucky off for City from a set piece. I do think set pieces where the bulk of our uh, goals against this season but as you can see City again just sort of cocking around at the back uh, Stanjak there getting in uh, in front of the defender and then Harvey with all the space well do you think they'd mark him do you think they'd know after the last game but no he uh, he was free again and we managed to uh, get the win again so we are pushing, up, pushing Arsenal all the way we then played Charlton at home, 1 2 0, with Canavan scoring again and Fowler also bagging another one. Uh, we then played, believe it or not, Arsenal at the Emirates in the Champions League quarter final. How big a game would that be in real life? And guess what? We won 3 0. Camera, Fowler, Pilavski. I think it is fair to say, you know, okay, I mean, we may have won the battles here, but uh, they won the war in the end, I suppose. Well, we'll get to that. 
Uh, but Pilavski is team man of the match. Uh, very, very good. I, Arsenal did not turn up. Simple as that. We, I set out. I set out to sort of crush the opposition if you will sometimes you know it's a big game it's like right I'm just going to go all out attacking we're going to have the wing backs darting up and down we're going to have mentality of attacking we're going to have push higher up we're going to have get ball forwards we're going to have all these shouts on we're going to have push up on the um, the defensive line's going to push up we're going to play the offside trap for example something like that I can't remember what else um, we're going to play quite wide you know you be as adventurous and attacking as you can and well this is what happens i mean i'm not saying it works every time but you know there have been times when i've done that and you know i've, I've gone down like four nil or something i can't quite pick out any prime examples but uh you know there have been times where i've done that nice pass here pilavski little just waiting for the right time and then cameron made his move and made it three nil 25 yards lovely finish three away goals at the emirates for tottenham thank you very much um and you can imagine how uh, that was received. I mean, being both you know Arsenal and Tottenham manager, you don't see that so often. And I know George Graham was, and I know um, who else. The only one I can actually name who was Tottenham and Arsenal manager is well respected by both was probably George Graham. Um, I can't imagine Arsenal fans like me too much on this save. Uh, we then played Chelsea at home. Uh, Klaus Christensen scoring again, and from another corner, I would assume, as he doesn't often, uh, as you don't find. Too many centre backs blasting them in, aka Daniel Agger on this game. Uh, then we brought them back to the Penguin Stadium, and Wilson grabbed two, and Fowler also scored one as we managed to beat Arsenal 6 1 on aggregate. <laughs> Nothing else to say. We're in the Champions League semi finals. Um, really is just, yeah, you couldn't have uh, you couldn't have written that, could you? Written a better script. Then uh, we played Aston Villa 3 2, Captain Harvey grabbing two, uh, and Canavan scoring and this was when I thought right maybe the pendulum is swinging away we're trying to catch Arsenal up because obviously Tottenham had a slightly shaky start it was, it was always playing catch up to Arsenal we managed to just sort of push Man United and Brighton and Chelsea behind us and now it really became a two horse race between Spurs and Arsenal and as you can see we're on this brilliant run which incidentally we did set a record uh, I think this one may have been a straight I mean I'm not talking this is all competitions I think of just consecutive straight wins 3-0 here Idris Dembele with a hat-trick I haven't seen too much of him why haven't you it's because I don't think he's actually good enough but he dragged, I, he uh, went into my office and said prove to me uh, that you're good enough to be in the first team and this is what he did he literally there's a player called Tits whoa 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 hang on where are you he's up front where is he? I, he's up here somewhere. There he is. Oh my god, I'm signing him. Felix Tits. I'll be back in a second. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna burst laugh I'm gonna burst out laughing again. <laughs> sorry about that. Right, um yeah, three 0 very nice victory. Uh here's Fowler again, really starts to come into his own. And, uh, well, Dembele, hat-trick. He had to prove, you know, to uh, that he would um, that, that he would be good enough for this team. And, well, well, he, he went and did, and did that. You know, getting everyone to the likes of Wilson, Pilewski and Fowler and, and so on. He, you know, he's done very well there. But I still can't get over the fact there's a Felix Tits. Oh, God. That's not a nickname as either, if you just, just want to point out. Look, set nickname. Nothing. Felix Tits. He's actually all right. To be fair to him, he's actually not bad. I might actually have to look at him. <laughs> Seriously, okay, maybe not the next window because I'm already playing it. But I've already, you know, I've started the new season in the future. But wow, <laughs> I can't believe that. Um, we then played. Lo and behold. Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup semi-final. I mean, honestly, a lot of people, we jokingly say, oh, this game's scripted. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and we won 4-0. We, we absolutely pushed their shit in, shall we say. Uh, Camera, Dembele, Fowler and Wilson all scoring. And, yeah, he has proved to me, I guess, Dembele, that he should be in the team with four goals in two games. Uh, very easy. Very, very easy. Stevie Pollock there up top, not having a particularly good game. Uh, neither the Kolasinikov, uh, Doherty, yeah, Scourge previously, uh, who scored the winner, of course, after getting their uh, last manager's last game. They were terrible. We dominated again. I, th I said, you know what? We're going to go out. We are going to destroy this team. And that's what we did. So, 
Whilst we didn't win the league, we are in the FA Cup final. We'll see to that later. We then played Real Madrid in the Champions League final. Real Madrid, of course, the record holders, not only in real life, but also on this. 17 times they've won it now, which is quite stupid and absolutely ridiculous. This was an unbelievably crazy game. Look, two penalties, both missed. Camera miss for us, Salcido miss for them. There's Javier Mondragon. Remember him? I talked about him in the American series when um, you know we played Mexico. I mean, that was. We could just say that was lucky, or was that poor defending? I honestly <clears throat> don't know. Um, there's also, if you look here, there's Mohammed. You may remember him. I've uh, talked about him before. If not, his name is Mohammed Mohammed. <laughs> God almighty. Yeah, he's actually a quality player. His Real Madrid team is frighteningly good. I mean, I'm talking like, you know, Man City good. And what I mean by that is they've basically just assembled all the best players in the world. And I mean, this Celia is quality. Mohamed's good. This Salcedo's good. I mean, look, oh, look at that. Ugh. Can you believe it? Can you believe that? Well, I'm incredibly unlucky, I suppose. There's all missed penalties and all sorts here. But one thing that we refuse to do is lie down. We did not lie down. Real Madrid were just dominating at this point, and I'm just like, man. The Champions League was a good run, wasn't it? But, you know, I, don't know, I was just thinking, right, we're, we're heading out of this. Bear in mind that it, it was at home, so if we got an away goal, that would change things. I mean, whilst we already, you know, I think we have, did we have one? I think we've scored one. Well, I think that's like 4-1 or something. I think yeah, I think yeah, that's four one. Could be completely wrong, but we stepped, we kept fighting, we kept at it. One thing I want my teams to do is always keep fighting till the end. And there's another one, four two, I think that is. Uh, Wilson, slightly lucky goal. It did bounce off the keeper. I guess he hit it with enough power that it would, you know, just bounce off him and trickle over the line. Here's Capitao, another that's a great name, isn't it? Um, good player, but came to Miguel here. Lovely composed finish. I thought he was going to smash that at the edge at the edge of the box, but no, he took it on. That was 5-2. Three goal leads. But this was the big one. This changed everything. And you will see later this was this this was the this was the game. Sorry, this was the goal coming up shortly from Billy Wilson. Poor goalkeeping. Canavan across Wilson. That was 5-3. We had three away goals. At not the Bernabeu, but the Thornton Arena, I know. <laughs> the current manager Joe Thornton. Who is a, a real player. I mean you may remember him if you've been watching for a while. He's a a very very good manager in fact he's in the Hall of Fame not too far behind me um, and yeah there were two penalties Camera actually had a chance to put us in front 1-0 and uh, he missed awful Nottingham Forest then played 2-1 slightly more cagey game although I did play a slightly rotated team uh, Canavan played uh, as one with Goncalves here a player you haven't seen too off too much but uh, he does come into his own in the latter half of the season as you'll see Anthony Power he's getting on a bit now not too long left in but I'm going to keep him anyway for a for it, we're going to have an experienced head in the team and then this was just to, just to point out okay next game obviously against Real Madrid we're going to be taking them to Perryman Stadium but in mind it's 5-3 so I'm going to let you do some maths for a second 5-2 5 plus 3 is 8 five, uh, <laughs> no it's not sorry 5 plus 3 is 8 2 plus 5 is 7 equals 8 7 Tottenham Hotspur were through to the Champions League final what the fuck mate this has to be and I'm going to call you mate <laughs> this is just between you and me the one of the maddest games I don't know what it is about Champions League semi-finals but they are just the maddest wackiest zaniest intense games you will ever see I talked about Mikowski before. This was one of the best, and I mean the best, individual performances I've ever seen on Football Manager. It's not very often that you see a midfielder, and mind you, a defensive midfielder, get a 9.6. Anything above a 9.5 usually means special. So you can imagine. I mean, he's not the most... I mean, he is a good player. He is quite a defensive player, usually. You know, he, he is the one to... I mean, okay, he's an advanced playmaker, but, you know, he usually does a lot of sort of tough tackling. You know, he's sort of in that Makaleli role whilst not being a defensive midfielder, but, you know, he is a sort of unofficial Makaleli. But he got a hat-trick here. 
I've got to show you. I've got. I want to show you these highlights because they're just or oh, the goal. Sorry, they are on. This was unbelievable. <laughs> it really was. Um, well, it, it basically, it starts. So I'm just going to keep reminding you of the goal. Seal coming in there. Now that's six three. Six three with an away goal. Now I wasn't too bothered at that point because there's plenty of football to be played. Not to mention we had three away goals. So, you know, there was plenty to uh, to go on. Now Harvey here. Nice. Uh, I guess almost sort of tiptoeing his way through, but he didn't really. But Mikowski just keeps going and going. Gives it to Canavan. Back again. Bang. Six four. Still in this one. Six four. Um, and you know we just sort of every time we'd get close to it, Madrid would just pull it away like they'd snag the rug from underneath you. And that is pretty much what they did here again. Sato here to seal. Cross the ball, Mohamed. There's Javier Mondragon. Talked about him before again. He does appear to be a bit of a scourge me at the moment. He did it. He did it for me against. Uh, sorry, for Mexico against the USA, my USA team. So that's seven four. Now Fowler on the ball, cross across, Makowski. Penalty? Is it, no, is there, where's the penalty? I'm waiting for the penalty. No, it's not. It's not a penalty. It's Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> Wrong time. Just, I don't know what happened there. It just bounded its way through. Here's the penalty. Makowski right at the goalkeeper. Enough power. Sent it in. So just a pause. Let me just pause. Take breath for a second. It's now 7-6 to Real Madrid. 7-6. We went, right, we've got to go for it. I'd rather lose, you know, 10-5 or whatever, trying to go for it as opposed to just, you know, 8-5 or something. You know, not really going for it and being defensive. But here we go, Harvey's ball across. There is Mo Camera. That's 7-7. That is 7-7. Well, way goal rule. They had two away goals um, and not three. Obviously, we scored the three away goals. And then this absolutely made sure of it. This is when Mark, this is when Mikowski got his his hat trick. Break away here. Bear in mind we are contained. I'm not counter. It's contained. Harvey gets it away. There's Keister Mikowski. Where did he come from? That's a hat trick. Eight seven. Unbelievable. That absolutely finished it off. And I think that may have just been a spoiler. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> just I honestly I just couldn't believe it. Just unbelievable. So we're through to a Champions League final and an FA Cup final. How did we do there? Well, we'll find out in a second. Here's Leicester. Played a slightly rotated team against Stuart Lloyd playing. Fowler with a goal as well. Wilson with another one. He's got, in fact, two there. Uh, Leicester, I think that sent Leicester down. We had to win there. Otherwise, Arsenal would have uh, won. The, in fact, no, it wasn't. That was not the case. Um, if we won here, Arsenal slipped up. So we actually were three points ahead of Arsenal. And then you can guess what happens. We lost to Blackburn. They gained retribution earlier. Leon Fowler's former team. If we'd won there, we pretty much would have won the title. Not officially, but that would have put us in the pole position. And we would have been set then. And that didn't happen. And then Arsenal, because we obviously we had the FA Cup final coming. That's why we're playing on Wednesday. The FA Cup final was next. And because of the whole title thing, Arsenal played alongside us. They beat whoever. I think they were playing Brighton. They beat them and um, they took back their lead balls <laughs> well, you know because obviously they had goal difference so they were now in the driver's seat then we played the FA Cup against Brighton and we won it but again it was not easy it was won for the ages this I can tell you straight away I'm going to have a heart attack by the time I leave Tottenham because the games are just unreal 4-3 after extra time as you can see I know I should I know, I'm probably going to have to find a way to sort of present them in review form without spoiling the result but because the result's already in the top left hand corner there I can't really hide it so sorry but you know I know it's kind of anticlimactic in a way but here's the goals anyway you know I can I can provide some sort of colour commentary and you know and say here's the, here are the goals in a dramatic fashion but a nice header there from Piliolavski that's on the 21st minute but straight away here Brighton kick back pretty much instantly well from the kickoff as you can see here's Tran I don't know what it is about players called Tran they seem to be really good and cause me all sorts of problems um, bear in mind obviously I had to be you know considerate and not like well obviously it was the FA Cup final obviously I played as strong a team as I could but you know I went, I went more with form as opposed to you know reputation which I don't usually do I do go with the highly rep uh, reputable t players but I went with form here and that's why Goncalves was playing because he's in really really good form 
and so to his father in a way. Uh, but that was 2-1. They turned that round in the space of about 10 minutes. And I was just thinking, whoa, what the hell happened here? We just suddenly fell apart. You know, absolutely crumbled. Uh, and this was then a header away. He comes out to try and, and the goalkeeper. Well, maybe could he have done better there? I don't think so. It was a, well, yeah, so it was a special goal. Smashed that from about 25 yards out. So we're 3-1 down at half time. 10. So we had to do another comeback. There's Matty Canavan. And the 57th minute, 10 minutes later, here we go again. Pilowski gives it to Harvey. Ran battle now with a cross. They're going to get, oh, sorry, no, Markowski with a cross, but that was blocked. Janssen intercepts. Markowski to Kone. Then Bailey now came on because I had to change up something. Fowler was doing terrible. Very lucky deflection. Deflections all over the place. Interest in Bailey. He scored again. 3 3. So he definitely has proven to me that he deserves a place in this team. He will be playing uh, next season, I'm sure. Obviously, you know, Billy Wilson consistently inconsistent Wilson he's, he's a good player but you know and he will get your goals but he's not going to turn it on every game and I don't think Den Bailey will either but he is you know trying his heart out of there and there was the winning goal 10 minutes before the end of extra time Pilowski not the greatest goal in the world do you think it matters not in the slightest 110 minutes Ole Pilowski we've won the FA Cup what about the Champions League we'll find out in a sec then the last game of the season was against Cardiff here Obviously, I had to rotate the team. I didn't want to take any chances. Arsenal pretty much had won the league. It was unofficial at this point, but they pretty much won it. Um, and actually, had they? I can't even remember. Uh, but Cameron Pirilowski scored there just to make sure that you know we finished a respectable amount of points. 83 points, you know, it's quite a high amount. But the big one, the Champions League final. Tottenham, believe it or not, throughout all the success they've had in the 40s, and bear in mind, you know, in the 20s, they were, I can't even remember what they were like in the 20s, but well, in the 30s, they enjoyed a miserable 2030s. Uh, they nearly got relegated several, several times. But uh, since the turn of the new decade, they have been in just unbelievable team. Can we top it all off with the Champions League? And can I break the hoodoo, of course, of, I've got to, Champions, I've got to, I think this was my 12th final. Remember, I did, I think, oh God, I can't remember how many times it was. There were so many. I think we did six times straight. Six straight losses in a Champions League final with Liverpool. We then won it twice in a row. Then took Arsenal to a Champions League final in my first season with them. Lost that. Then took Dortmund to a Champions League final. Lost that. Surely it can't happen again, can it? No, it doesn't. 3-2, uh, we won. Finally, third. And only my third. I may, this may have been my 12th final. But three times. That is now my third Champions League. Karsten Mikowski, the man for the big occasion it does appear to be. 8.8 rating. Klaus Christensen there not having a particularly good game. But do you think it matters? No, of course it does. And it was in Athens. So that is the twice now. That is twice I've won in Athens. I've won in Paris and I've won in Athens twice. Um, I've been to all sorts of stadiums and so on. But this was the you know this was the one that I seem to like. And there's Pilowski just going through there. Three and a half minutes played. Three. Oh, that's one nil straight away. And I knew we could take Inter. Because Inter weren't even that great. There's Goncalves right on half time, 2 0. I've not really been in this position before. Very rarely have my teams actually gone in at half time. I don't think maybe once or twice out of maybe 12 finals have we gone in actually leading and, and leading by a margin. But there's uh, the, I think he's a Chinese player. Uh, where is he? He's in the box somewhere. Can't find them. Uh, never mind. But he's a striker. I saw there. He's called um, Wu Kuei. And that's what happens if you try to say look away with a slight um, speech impediment. Uh, but this was, uh, that's 2-1. They brought themselves back into it. But Harvey's delivery here has been a little bit uh, off all season. Very lucky deflection. It came to Pilowski. You know what? Who cares? It doesn't matter how it happens. This was in the 94th minute. 3-2. Did put a little um, uh, sort of, yeah, I guess, slight downer on the thing on the whole thing but that was our 94th minute there was no way they were going to come back at this point and we won the Champions League first time first time ever <laughs> and my third one which is quite unbelievable really considering I've been to 12 fucking finals <laughs> um, unbelievable absolutely unbelievable uh, time so uh, Europe here let's go with uh, the Europa League winners where Leon they beat uh, Liverpool in the final uh, in Florence 
I, what I think I've noticed is with the Europa League is they all play in like different stadiums. It always appears to be like a new stadium usually. I mean, there are okay repetitions, but there does appear to be you know different stadiums every year. If you look at the Champions League final, for example, it's always the same stadium every year. Look, there's Athens, there's Athens again, London, Wembley, Cardiff, Marseille, Istanbul, Milan, Cardiff, London, Madrid, Old Trafford, Rome. You know, it's always the same ones. I mean, okay, with the occasional, you know, you get the occasional uh, Stad Velodrome, you get the occasional. That's it, actually. It's the only new one. You get the occasional Burnabout. But again, we're going to be at the Olympia Stadion. When was that? That was two thousand thirty-five. Only thirteen years ago. You know, so I don't, I don't get it. It, it. It's not very good with the whole rotation thing. But as you can see, Arsenal won it last season. Could we do one better than them? Oh yes, we could. We won it in Athens. Um, quite unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable game. An unbelievable season. To be honest with you, um, <laughs> just astonishing, absolutely astonishing. Uh, goals wise, this is how we ended up then. So, Pili as you can see, does appear to be the big main player. I've talked about him before. Billy Wilson I talked about him being inconsistent. He got 27 goals this season. That's hardly inconsistent. It's just more sort of, you know, he is more susceptible to having a bad game, you know. Camara with 17, uh, then Bailey with 9, so he's hardly a bad player. Fowler with 8, bear in mind that's not too bad considering he joined halfway through the season. There's Harvey on 7 and Canavan on 6. Assist wise, uh, 15 for Kone and Camara, 14 for Harvey and 12 for Canavan. So there's a good core here, I'm just going to build around it. I'm not going to try and make the team big because that's the problem. What happens is you inflate the team full of shite like you do, you know, your stomach or whatever it is, you, know, you eat fast food. And the problem is then you have too many players um, who are, you know who want first team football, and you're not you're physically not able to give it to them. So you have to trim the fat. Always trim the fat uh, of your team, and don't make. It. I always sort of maintain that if you if you scroll, the amount of scrolling you have to do through your team. If you have to do too much, then you probably need to cut it down. Simple as that. We'll just move them into the reserves, you know, and, and sell them on or let the contract run out or whatever. So that's going to do it for me. I think I've gone on for way too long, I think, here. Um, thank you very much for watching. We've got the Super Cup game then against Leon. That's going to be coming soon uh, in the February, February review. We'll see how we do then. I'm going to go have a drink because my voice is um, dying. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in February. Goodbye. In fact, no, no. Last thing. Last thing. One last thing, I want to show you the championship. Who got promoted then? Ipswich, Huddersfield and Crew. So it does appear to be the same teams every season now. I mean, that, that is the current state of the um, the championship. League One, uh, Watford, Fulham and Barnet again promoted the championship there. So Fulham actually bouncing back. They don't uh, appear to stick around too often. Uh, Burnley, Colchester, Salisbury and Boston coming up from League Two. And Preston and Barnsley going from... Um, the conference uh, this is how Spain looks but, uh, Real Madrid winning by four points ahead of Barcelona Catafe in third look at that Betis and Espanyol not even getting into the Champions League and France predictable old France uh, their season's already started so if you look last season yep you guessed it Leon. boring <laughs> uh, yeah so we're going to play Leon. hopefully um, beat them up for their annoying persistently winning the um of the of the french league so yeah that is going to do it for me thanks for watching i'll see you next time in february bye bye